Well, welcome back to Saints Unscripted. We got a good old show for you folks today. We're going to be talking about what it's like to be a Latter-day Saint in the Bible. Yeehaw! Yeehaw, boy! <laughs> All right, so uh, this is an episode about the Bible Belt, and we are here with our good friend Jordan, who is from Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia. A little about twenty, a little town like twenty minutes south of Georgia, so right in the middle of the Bible Belt. What's the What's the town called? It's well, it's called Noonan. 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 I say Peachtree City because people know that more, but gotcha. Peachtree City. Peachtree. Peach 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 oh, Peachtree. Everything in Georgia. Like, is not like Peachtree. Peachtree. Peach like, like peach, I think yeah. Peachtree like a, a Peachtree Peach dish. dish. <laughs> like yikes! <laughs> Please rename that town. Big juicy peaches. Everywhere. Okay. Mm. Well, I'm also from the south, kind of. I'm from <laughs> Cypress, Texas, um, which is Texas is kind of the south, but kind of not. You know. Yeah, and you kind of feel thing. like getting to like the edge of the belt. Yeah, like we're we're southerners, but like. Texans don't really like other Southerners that much. Nope. It's like where we like our, you know, like we'll deal with some Oklahoma people, like a couple of Arkansas guys, but anyone else, like, sorry, you, you don't cut it, you know? I'm also from the south of Washington, and it's really cool North there. Northwesterner. Although, yeah. to be fair, before I lived in Texas, I lived in Rockville, Maryland, so I'm not really a good Southerner. It's even worse. I was raised. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I don't say y'all. I say you guys. I don't wear hey, boots. You I don't... Do you say fixin' too? No, of course not. No. Okay. I don't. Then We're you're definitely not from before. the south. We're fixin' to. Li but Houston, you've got like like there's different accents. In Houston, so. Like the Houston, like we're fixing to leave, or it's like, hey, we finna leave, like that. We just put all their words together. Yeah. yeah. Like that South happens. Houston kind of yeah. a thing. But um, Latter Day Saints growing up in the Bible Belt, it can be hard for them sometimes. Oh yeah, definitely. I think because in the Bible Belt, it's just everybody has been going to the church since forever. So yeah. everybody's had all of their beliefs ingrained into them, and I think that when you're a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, our church is targeted. I swear, it's like For real, everybody right. in high school growing up, you would always come to church and there would be days where it was like, oh, my pastor, we had anti-Mormon Sunday <laughs> today. And I'm using Mormon yeah. because back then we could call, we could say Mormon. And yeah. so they'd say, um, well, you know what? Like, this is what he told me this weekend. And I was just like, that's so well, actually that's, you know, that, and sometimes it was usually like put in a way. Yeah, it was yeah. half truth or put in a way to make us like put in a bad light or negative. Um, but yeah, so it could have been hard, but it was also really good. It's really great because a lot of people are very Christian and they've got that Christian background, but it just comes with the fact that a lot of times they're just told a lot of negative things about us, about the church. And so that kind of make it a little bit difficult. Yeah, um, I think and, and, uh, there's, there, it's, it's interesting because... Um, I lived in San Francisco, which is a very secular city um, and very LGBT city, right? And so being a Latter-day Saint in San Francisco and recognizing that right now in America, our church does not have the best relations with the LGBT community. We're, we're working on it, right? But I got way less crud there for being a member of the church than I would get in Texas, which is like, and you would think Christian conservative South, secular LGBT California, who was going to treat me better, but it was the secular LGBT because they had, a lot of them came from different parts of the country where they were bullied because they were gay or they were treated badly, and so they know what it's like to be ostracized and to be sure. treated unfairly because of being a certain way, and so they didn't do that to me. But in Texas, it was like, uh, my pastor said this, y'all believe this, therefore I'm going to say this, it's a false Bible, false Jesus, you're going to hell, it just all these things. And no matter what, no matter how much logic I would use, no matter what, how many facts I would present, no matter what, it was right. just, nope, <laughs> it's a different Jesus, nope, 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 like, you couldn't get through. Um, I don't know. I, I just, I think people need some encouragement sometimes. Well, and that's the thing. You can't use logic or reasoning. It really has to come down to, this is what I believe. This is what I believe. This is what I know to be true. One of the uh, problems, the biggest problems that people have with the church is our belief in the Book of Mormon. Sure. And they yeah. cite the Bible verse that says... There's no other scripture. Oh, yes. Do not add on Thank to the... You. which Thank is. You. It does, and you're like, but, but out of context, what it, you put yeah. it in context, it can't exactly. even mean, yeah. But and that, I try to tell them, you try to yeah. use that logic and you say, well, that's kind of out of context. You give them a historical background, but when it comes down to it, you just have to let them know, this is what I believe. 
you know, I believe that the Bible is the Word of God. I believe the Book of Mormon is when Jesus came to the Americas and he was preaching to prophets there. I believe that's the Word of God too. Right. That and, sounds familiar. Yeah. Article of Faith number... Ooh, well, I, and, and I think that uh, the, um, our Southern cr brothers and sisters, they have deep conviction. They have deep conviction for God. I mean, these people, they, they, they hold their Bibles and they hold them firm and they hold them strong and they know what they believe. Um, and they're, it, it's very evangelical, so their whole, their whole thing is to evangelize. So if they feel that they, they, they see someone who does not agree with them in their religion, they say, oh, we have to save them. We have to change what they believe. But the issue is, um, a lot of times, people when people have religions, they're also well-read on their religions. So if you go talk to a Jewish guy and you say, hey, you haven't accepted Jesus, he's going to say, why would I accept Jesus? Jesus broke the Sabbath. Jesus did this. Old Testament says no man can die for another man since they have all their reasons why. And then they go, so why would I believe it? And you go, well, the Bible says this. And it just gets down to Bible says this. My interpretation of the Bible says this. My interpretation of the Bible says this. And it's just people talking directly past right. each other. Because once you really start confronting the actual issues, it gets really sticky. And you find out that if there's no spirit in the actual debate, then it's literally just your apologetics versus my apologetics and your historical facts of these people and my historical facts about these people. And you can pick your side with any early Christian church father. You can pick your side with any translation of the Bible. You can pick what you want, and it honestly becomes kind of meaningless. I think there's a very big difference between a discussion and an argument. An yeah. argument is where you both have an opinion and you're not going to change. And a discussion <laughs> is when you're genuinely like open to sharing facts. I'm not saying you're going to change each other's opinions, but like you actually like have a conversation. And, yeah. but I'm wondering it, cause I'm sure that these experiences, like, I'm sure that strengthened your testimony. Otherwise you wouldn't be here. You Absolutely. Know? Cause you, you were just attacked a lot. I'm sure. Yeah. Did you ever see friends who like that really affected them or did it ever really affect you like negatively to have be attacked so much for being a member of the church? Um, I think it affected me. One of the moments that really sticks out in my mind is I was a senior in high school and the teacher had left our psychology class and one of my, it was actually one of my friends beside me just said in passing, like, oh, well, Mormons aren't Christian anyway. And I was like, hmm. well, actually we are. You know, our name is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And he was like, you're not Christian. And I was like, yes, we are. Hmm. And then he yells for the entire room to hear, <laughs> you are not Christian. And in that moment, it was like one of those TV scenes where like right. pause and everybody Everyone's, looks at yeah. you, and spotlights on you. And... Poor little timid, like, you know, 17-year-old me. I was just like, yes, we are. <laughs> and I got up and I walked out of the room and I just, I felt like, I just felt so attacked. Right. And I just felt I mean, you like. you were. Like, yeah. Little, no, I, like, I was. Verbally, exactly. yeah, exactly. But here's the thing. I'm going to say that's good because it's like, it's not controversial to be an evangelical. It's not controversial to be a Methodist or a Presbyterian. No one goes and pickets Lutheran churches. It's controversial to be a Latter-day Saint, and that's how it was with Christ's church. They were, um, they were the Jews who had the newest law, and Jesus Christ was actually literally just changing things. Like, it is, it is written that an eye for an eye, don't do it. You know, he's like, you have heard this, it is written this, I'm literally changing it. I am the new guy, I am in charge, I am sent by God. And the rest of the Jews are like, they don't, their doctrines are different. They're changing things. They are changing. They're not following the law. They're everything they're doing is different, but they're still Jews. In fact, they were like the, the best of the Jews because they had the most current information. And that's us today. We, we don't, you know, we're not invited to the rest of the Christians parties. Like we're not, we don't get included, <laughs> but Jesus Christ and his church weren't like his disciples. They were not included. And the real church is never going to be the accepted popular you know, theology. It's never going to be that way. And so, so when they yell at you or they say you're not a Christian or they challenge X, Y, and Z or they give you half truth or do whatever, remember they did a lot worse to Jesus Christ and they did a lot worse to his apostles. So you're in good company. But remember, um, by not fitting in, you are standing with the Savior. And a question that I kind of had for you, because you said you grew up in Southern Washington. So I feel like Oregon. I... Oregon. Dang it. No, no, it's, I said Southern Washington because oh. it's a joke. So, oh. yeah, but yeah, Oregon. <laughs> Got me. <laughs> um, my grand overview of living in the Bible Belt, growing up in the South, is that a lot of people, like the, what you said, they have the best intentions. They feel like you're going to go to hell if you don't believe what I believe. You're not going to be able to be saved. So I need to tell you what to do to be saved. But at the same time, they just didn't know how to maneuver talking to right. you about it. 
And so when you would say that you're a member of the church, you'd either have people attack you, you'd either have people say, you know, oh, that's fine, and kind of like, in the South, we'd say like, bless your heart. (laughs) <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, sweetheart. Bless well, your heart. I'll pray for you is another one. Thank you. I'll yeah. pray. That's Southern for screw you. Like, uh, Thank I'll you. pray for you. Like, Thank you. Please do. I need yeah. it. Um, and so, or people, you know, they'd have these other misconceptions where they'd be like, right. wait, so how many moms do you have? Right. So what was it like, you know, kind of juxtaposition to the South? Well, I mean, it was pretty, it was actually a lot more, because Oregon's very liberal, um, at least where I was from. And so it was really interesting to see that people, some very few people actually had any conception whatsoever about, or any concept whatsoever wow. about what the church was. I remember hearing one joke where I was in middle school and this kid, I heard him like, he was down the aisle for me and he said to somebody like, oh, what are you, Mormon? And then my friend and I look over and we're like, well, we are. And he got all red like, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, because he didn't know because he thought he was being funny. And, and it was cool because in my small town, there's about 500 kids in my high school. And so we were all really good friends and really close. And at the end of the day, I actually, my best friends in the world were members of different Christian congregations because they actually held the same beliefs as I did. They actually were more religious and righteous than a lot of people who were members of the church because I had a lot of friends who were members but less active. Right. And so I was more friends with people from these different congregations because they had the same values as I did. And so it was really interesting to grow up in that environment where, like, it wasn't... um, it wasn't a threat to be a member of a different church because we yeah. all believed in Christ. And I, I, I would, I think that's the way it should be, right? So, um, I've got good friends who are not in the church, but our our goal for like we have the same goal for society, right? We want to have people to be happy. We want to take care of the poor. We want pe- neighbor to be able to live next to neighbor and like things to be good. You don't have to agree on theology because at the right. end of the day, the reality is people believe in their religion because of everything that shaped them in their life. You can't judge someone who is in a different religion unless you've walked everywhere they have walked, right? And I think, if anything, one of the one of the coolest experiences I've had is that if you truly care about someone or love somebody as a human, or as, that you support them in their beliefs. And that was yeah. what I found a lot is that when I was tested, the people would come to me, like to invite me to a party, and I had friends who weren't members would be like, "Oh, well, he doesn't go," you know, or like you know when they're passing, like when they're going to drink, they'd be like, "Oh, Justin, there's gonna be like alcohol at this party. You, you probably aren't gonna want to come." My friends, they protected me because they loved me. And the yeah. same way I would protect them. That I, Even though they believed something different than me, I had a friend who was a Seventh-day Adventist. And so we had sporting activities um, on Saturday, and they wouldn't go. And it was really hard for him to say no, but I would always come up and be like, hey, like it's cool. And I would, I would stand up for him. I won't be there tomorrow. Exactly, because like, that's his belief, you know? Yeah. And, and, and it's not like he, we're saying that, oh... You know, your 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 Seventh-day Adventist friends were, like, giving you books about Joseph Smith's doctrine. Like, here, this is good. No. I'm not saying that they have to compromise their beliefs. Right. But you can support them in their standards. Exactly. So um, I, I, get, I did a fireside recently, and I invited one of my Protestant friends. And um, th- I was asked to speak about, you know, how I gained faith in Jesus Christ by, you know, um, discovering and, and embracing the restored gospel. And my original talk had some, some things in it that were kind of, like, a little bit... A little throwing down a little bit on on the Protestant Reformation and, and that doctrine, and I was like, well, there are going to be some Protestants there, so I'm going to phrase these things in a nicer way, and I'm going to take certain things out because I don't want to make them feel uncomfortable in the room, right? So it's showing I care about them, and I believe what I believe, and everyone is edified. No one is knocked <laughs> down. Um, I think there's definitely a, a respectful and educated way to talk about your beliefs, and I think, I mean, we could all learn from that. But I'm sure it would be very difficult to handle that those situations in the Bible Belt where you're getting attacked mercilessly. Right. And look, it takes a lot we've of all patience. done some Bible bashing too. Like, we've all yeah. been there. We've all, you've probably <laughs> seen me do it. So um, something I think is important to notice and to take into account, um, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of Hindus in our country. Not as many Hindus as a lot of Saints, but there's sure. not as many Hindus. Yeah. Um, you don't ever see, you very rarely see, um, you know, uh, Bible Belt Christians, you know, uh, having intense dialogues with Hindus, right? It's kind of like, I mean, it's, it's also almost impossible to yeah. debate with yeah. a Hindu. They're incredibly smart, and so you can't do it. But, like, there, there's not really that attitude towards them as there is a very negative attitude towards us. Um, uh, and, and, and that's because in the United States, we don't have this history of intense persecution towards Hindus. Um, so early on, our church was persecuted heavily. Um, driven from the state, I mean, houses were burned down, people were killed, and people often like to justify it. And they say, oh, Joseph Smith, 
did bad things, yeah, I guess, but that doesn't, if you think that, that doesn't justify right. children all being murdered and, like, you know, all right. these awful things. So that happened, and then there was just, American society sort of was a sponge, and they just soaked up prejudice. And the same way we had prejudice against, uh, you know, uh, women and blacks and Native Americans and Hispanics and Chinese people, like, the same thing, it was also with our religion. There was prejudice, and those things get passed down. A big reason why the evangelical Bible Belt does not like our church is because of the prejudice handed down from their fathers and their fathers. It's not strictly about theology. If so, you guys would have a big issue with Hindus. You'd have a big issue with Buddhists and Confucius, and you don't. You have an issue with us in particular because of the history of prejudice in the country. And that's the biggest reason. And people will try to say, oh, we have a different Bible, oh, it's different. But that isn't. It just comes down to people, we have, uh, we have things in our country that we've passed down that are bad, and we need to work on it. But you're never going to actually build the, the best society you want that I think the Savior is approving of if we're being hate-filled, and if we're knocking people down, if we're lying about their beliefs, and if we're, you know, going out in front of their temples or their churches or cathedrals with signs and saying, ah, you're going to hell. I mean, that's just not what Christ wants. And I just want to also make the point that a lot of people, they are so kind. You will go there and Southern hospitality is a true thing. You'll go to the right. grocery store and by the time you checked out at Walmart, you know about her five kids and you know, <laughs> who's doing good and who's not. But um, it just comes down when it's that religious conversation, when yeah. it's come to when you're trying to find um, not common ground, but when you're just trying to have a mutual respect for each other. And that's where kind of the disconnect happens. Yes. Um, but it's getting better because people, especially our age, people are getting more, you know, more although more people aren't as religious, people are getting more understanding. So maybe we can show people that religion is good. And even though we're getting better, we're, we're getting to the place well, it where... It doesn't have bad stuff. Yeah, it's true. You know, like, who's uh, perfect? <laughs> the South does not have bad food. Can we be honest about that? Southerners can cook very Cheeks. well. I mean, my gosh. <laughs> Utah, Utah Mexican food does not cut it. It just doesn't cut... Utah barbecue? Come on. Come on. Let me tell you. And he's just anywhere in the South. Hey, can you barbecue? You bet I can, brother. Like, they just know what they're doing. It's just good. We hope that y'all... Y'all. Have had a good... Show now, you hear? And, and and we're fixing to end this show. And uh, finna gonna the stars subscribe, subscribe not, and y'all. Are big and y'all bright. Hit that button now. Yeah, hit, They've been the notification. The, pro- we're probably offending a lot of people right now. This is probably so wrong. <laughs> Sorry, mom. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a part of this. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, we're, we're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Subscribe below, click the notification bell, and notify when your videos come up. Share this video with all your friends. Comment below. Let us know what you think. And Adam Perez, stop leaving mean comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Called out. Okay.